everyone and welcome. Um, my name is Amy and this is part three of a multi-part introduction to Stata workshop. Um, hopefully you were able to watch parts one and two, which went over how data are organized in Stata and how you can manipulate that data using subsetting and functions. This part is a little bit different. Uh, this part is designed to get you started uh, on your own using Stata for your own research. And to do this, Rebecca and I have put together a self-directed worksheet, which is linked in the video description. And our hope is that you'll work through that worksheet on your own and at your own pace um, and get a better sense of what Stata can do and how to use it. What this video is for is to just give you an overview of how to get started with that worksheet um, and how to open Stata on your computer and set up everything so that you can begin playing around with it and running analyses on your data. So if we go over here and open the Stata application, this is what Stata's home window looks like. Here in this section, we'll see the output. If you remember from part two, this is what Stata is giving us. Here on the right, we'll see a list of variables. Here, this is information about our data set. But the most important part of Stata uh, is something called the do file editor. And if you've worked with other statistical software in the past, or if you've done any sort of coding, you know the importance of having reproducible code. And in Stata, reproducible code documents are called do files. And we open one by clicking on the do file editor. What a do file is, is it's basically just a text document uh, where you write all of your code for all of your data cleaning and your analyses, and you keep it in one uh, safe place so that you can return to it later and uh, know what you did. Your do file should contain every line of code that you need to conduct a data analysis. Um, this way you can save the do file and rerun all of your commands. You can send your do file to someone else and they could replicate your analysis. And all in all, this do file really ensures that, you, uh, that your code is reproducible, that your research and analysis could be reproduced or replicated by someone else. You could start a do file from scratch by just typing on line one. Um, but in the self-directed handout that's linked below, we've provided you with an example do file template. This template overviews what most do files for uh, social science research could look like. Um, obviously, as you get more familiar with Stata and with writing code, um, you might go off script a little bit and write do files that um, are are organized slightly differently. Um, but if you're just getting started, this is a template for uh, what a basic do, do file for a homework assignment or uh, a short paper could look like. We recommend having information at the top of your do file that tells you what this do file does. Um, so for example, you can have a title. I'm gonna call this Data Workshop Part 3. You should always write your name. And the date should be the date that you last edited this do file. So you can keep track of the work that you've done and when you did it. Here you can put a little description of what the do file does. Um, this can be as short or as long as you need. This is mostly for you so that you remember um, if you have many different do files going on for a different project or for a different class, uh, this is a quick way to know what the do file does. In the self-directed handout that's linked below, we talk about all of the pieces of this do file, but I'm gonna get you started on just a few of them. The first is something called a working directory. And a working directory is super important for uh, any research. It's basically a folder somewhere on your computer that contains all of your information about a project. So for example, if you are taking a class, um, this working directory would be the folder for that class. Similarly, if you're doing a research project, um, you should have a folder that is devoted to just this research project. And you should know where this folder is on your computer and be able to easily access it. Because this working directory contains everything relevant for the project, uh, usually my first step is to save my do file in this working directory. I'm gonna call this example do. And the working directory that I created specifically for this video is on my desktop, and it's called example working directory. 
your working directory is probably going to have many subfolders. The two that I put here, um, which I'll talk about in a moment, one is for data. So this is any relevant data for the project or class. And the second is something called a log. Log files, as I'm going to talk about in a moment, keep a record of everything that you do with Stata and then save them. For do files, you could have a separate folder um, that's specific to do files, but right now I'm just going to save it generally in my working directory. So now that we have our do file saved and we have a working directory on our computer, our next step is to tell Stata which working directory we're using. And the reason we need to tell Stata this is Stata will use your working directory as a default when it does anything. So if it's looking for data or if it's saving output, um, it's going to go directly to your working directory. So it's really important that at the beginning of each do file, you set the relevant working directory that contains everything you need in order to operate this do file. And the way we set a working directory is through this function or command called cd. And then we have a file path here in quotes. If you're one of those people who can just know what the file path is right away, you could type this out here. Um, but for most of us, the easiest way is to locate that folder on your computer and then ask your computer to give you the file path. So I know that my working directory is on my desktop. If I want to know what the file path is to this folder, I can right click hold down the option key and type copy example working directory as path name. If you have a PC, the instructions are slightly different, um, but they're noted for you in the handout that's linked below. Now that I have the file path, I can copy and paste it here. So now that I have the code written, I've done the first step, but I need to actually run this code in Stata. So the do file works as a text document where you type code, but at some point you have to transfer it over to the main Stata window. The way you do that is you highlight the code and then you can click this button in the top right that says do. Now you can see in my main Stata window, I've run this command and I've set my working directory. In the handout that's linked, we also tell you some shortcut key commands to run code from do files into the Stata window. Um, so on a Mac, it's command shift D. The next step in a do file is to start running what's called a log file. And as I said briefly before, a log file keeps track of all of the code that you've run and it saves both the code and the output in one document. To get started running a log file, we use this command called log. Then we say using and uh, a file path or a document. Since we don't have a log set up right now, we can call this whatever we want and it will just create it for us. I'm gonna call this log, a very creative name. And if you remember, in my working directory, I actually had a folder specific to logs. If I just ran this command as is, Stata would work directly within my working directory here and not within the logs folder. So in order to get this log document to be saved in the logs folder, I need to slightly edit the path name here. What this tells Stata is that it should start with the working directory pathway and then add on another folder called logs and then save the document log.log .log here. So if I run this command, I can see that I have a new log document called log.log .log that's saved in the folder logs. If I wanted to see this, I could go to my example working directory and the logs folder and I see here a temporary document called log.log. .log. Okay, so now we're ready to actually open up some data in Stata um, and start playing around with it. I usually have a section in my do files called data cleaning. Um, this is where you manipulate and edit the data and create new variables and sort of get the data ready for your main analysis portion. And then later you'll have an analysis section of the do file um, where you can run regressions or uh, summary statistics or really anything else that you need. So now that I've set my working directory and started running a log file, I need to open my data. 
And while I could go find my data on my computer and double click it and Stata would automatically open it for me, it's better for reproducible code if we open the data set within the do file um, using its file path. If you remember in the working directory that I created for this video, um, I have a subfolder called data and in that folder is a data set called salary.dta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the file path to open that data in Stata. In order to open data, we use the command called use, and then in quotes, we put the file path. Just like with logs, in order to get into a subfolder in my working directory, I just type the name of that folder, and then a slash, and then the data set name. This is my working directory. Here's the subfolder data. Within that folder, I have already a Stata data set called salary.dta. Um, so now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna open that using the, the path name. To run the command, if you remember, we highlight and click do. Now if I go back to this main win window, I can see that I have data open in Stata. Right here, it's auto-populated what the variables are. It's given me some properties of the data set. If I were to cl click on the data browser, I could see the data in Stata. Like we showed you in part one, um, this should look really familiar. We have variables in the columns here. They're color coded according to their type. Um, and we can scroll down and get a sense of what our data look like. So now that we have data loaded and ready to go, we can start running any commands uh, that we want to manipulate this data and do different things. We've organized this example do file in terms of data cleaning and analysis, but if you're just planning on doing the self-directed handout below, you can basically delete all of this extra information and just go ahead and uh, follow the different activities in the self-directed handout to learn how to do different things in Stata. Because we opened a log, the last thing to remember is that before you quit out of Stata, you should close the log that you have open by running log close. And this will close the log file um, and stop recording the output and the commands that you're running. So hopefully this video gave you an overview of how to get started actually working with Stata on your own. Our hope is that you'll use the handout to explore on your own at your own pace. Um, and thank you so much for watching.